If you want to know where I think the energy and the focus and the success will be over the next five years, it's going to be a combination. We're going to see gene therapy improving and going into clinical trial, that's for sure. Cell therapy probably has the most momentum at the moment and we're seeing early delivery of cells into the circulation that can have a generalized benefit as well. The bone marrow transplantation work uh, initially started by Dr. Wagner and Dr. Tolar in the United States has really been a paradigm shift in how we might use the power of cell therapy to improve EB. But it shouldn't just be considered as the single best treatment. We are already seeing that protein therapy is very exciting. The idea of giving protein into the skin or into a vein. A few years ago, we would never have thought that would be possible. But it is. It's starting to occur now. And of course, there'll be drug therapy as well, that we can modify certain G mutations. I think we need, so, will need different types of therapies. I was very skeptical about protein therapy, but now the results show that it might indeed be developed to a reasonable therapy for at least some forms. But I think the most promising uh, therapeutic approaches now are the IPS cell therapies that Dennis Roop just talked about. And my feeling is that this is the uh, strategy that will help the most patients with EP. And, and hopefully in the five years time, uh, one or two of those areas that are currently uh, under active uh, uh, development uh, would be available to the patients in terms of clinical care and uh, um, perhaps it's not a single single uh, way to uh, approach, uh, but a combination of things that would make the life um, uh, of EB patients uh, uh, easier and um, less suffering. Many of the researchers feel that it's going to be a combination of bits of these various treatments that is going to make a difference to most people with EB. And there may be people who've got EB simplex, who need a different treatment from somebody who's got junctional EB or dystrophic EB, whether something's dominant or something's recessive whether somebody needs a local treatment or something internal that's going to go generally around the skin and uh, distribute itself uh, far and wide. The field is moving incredibly fast and it's always a balance between the incremental, the, the improvement of the methodology that we have uh, designed and others designed in the past and the, the experimental, the, the what, we, what we try to achieve that is, that is more in a distant horizon but maybe more effective for the children and adults that we treat. I mean, for me, the biggest challenges that we're facing as an organization are around getting from where we are at the moment, which is that we've got very, very, very promising results uh, for new therapies for EB, uh, in a way that we haven't had even you know, three to five years ago. Uh, but what we have now is the challenge of translating those uh, very um, encouraging results in the laboratory into treatments that actually make a real difference to people with EB. Now um, in the last 15-20 years, the amount of um, work that's heading towards actually treating people, making proper therapies that can make a real tangible difference to them, it's really quite dramatic, isn't it? It's, it's, it's been a lovely journey to, to be on, and hopefully over the next 5-10 years that will continue and we'll, we'll come up with um, things that make a real significant difference to the lives of people with EB across all different types of EBs.